understanding and you're wow, so Wow, I like that. There's yeah. a lot of power in knowing that yeah. you don't know. Yeah. Mm. Because when you become a great pupil, you understand that you can be corrected. You're a student of life. Mm. You understand that a concept you have held on to for years can be changed like that. This is the Hustlers Corner. Hello everybody, welcome to the Hustlers Corner. First up, that shop shop sign on the count of one, two, three, let's go. Click, 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 thank you. Click the subscription button as well, click so the community grows. And I'd like to welcome all of our brand new subscribers. Over the past month, we have grown by 15,000 new subscribers. Ooh. So thank you so much guys for joining the family. The family is growing. Keep sharing the videos, keep um, talking about the podcast. It's a podcast that, um, shares amazing positive stories to inspire a new generation of young hustlers out there it's a progressive podcast we're not about anything negative here we're about promoting positivity talking about positivity now there's this young sister who's been doing incredible <laughs> work all over the world okay. her name is palisa molefe very young she's an actress she's an entrepreneur she's a philanthropist and she's currently working as a writer, a producer, as I said, an actress as well. She's the founder of <laughs> Botswana United Artists, yes. which is an NGO founded to illuminate the value of artists and mental health in society. Yes. Her proudest moment was when the agency was finally registered as an NGO. Um, she has a fear of not trying hard enough. <laughs> the Notebook is her favorite film. And um, yeah, she's been doing amazing work all over the world and her personal motto is make beautiful things even, even if, if no, no one, one notices. notices ladies and gentlemen we've got miss botswana 2021 <laughs> welcome to the hustlers Con. <laughs> how are you doing i'm good thank you for having me how are you thank you thank you so much for paying us a visit we appreciate it the pleasure's all mine how often are you in Johannesburg? shucks not often enough Okay. Um, but hopefully that's going to change because a lot of what I want to do, especially in my writing and my line of work, I really want to infiltrate the South African market yeah. and make a name for myself here as well. So I think I'll be coming a bit more often. There's been a lot of Botswana people, um, Botswana, that have done extremely well in their careers yes, here at home. Yes, yes. So I think you've got, all, you've got what it takes. Great you're young, support. you're smart, you're doing incredible work. Thank you. You've got a vision. Yes. And uh, so I hear you're an old soul. Shape. <laughs> yes, I am. But the person who was telling you that was telling you that because my music, my taste in music is always old souls. From your Patti LaBelle to your Doris to your Barry, um, Anita. I love that. And I think also coming to just the things of the heart. I am such... Sleeve. Yeah. Halo, yeah. Same thing. Yeah. I wear it on my sleeve. And I love love. I love affection. I love the tiny things that come to just love and all of that stuff. So, yeah. Things that matter, right? Things that matter. So, are you Miss Botswana 2020 or Miss Botswana 2021? I'm Miss Botswana 2021. So, I'm going to have my predecessor and I'm going to give her the crown this year um, around September. So, you are the current reigning Miss yes. Botswana? <laughs> I am oh, the wow. current reigning Miss so Botswana. Dope. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the current reigning Miss Botswana. It's amazing. The support I've been getting from Botswana has been exceptional um, the support from the beginning actually and you know just want to say thank you Kola Pink Aleboha so much it's something that I always say whenever I start a video whenever I say something to Botswana Aleboha because they've really been a great pillar of strength and a great support system within the whole whole experience they say through the laws of nature to always keep on succeeding yes. you must always be grateful gratitude gratitude, yeah. gratitude when you always thing. say thank you thank yes. you yes. Yes. basically you are giving the universe more things to say yes. for. Yes. when you're always complaining you're giving the universe more things to complain it's, about it's the frequency and i think it's so powerful when you think when it's difficult when it's so hard when your body and everything in your life is screaming in the opposite direction but you say i want to say thank you you have no money in the bank you don't yeah. know what you're gonna do tomorrow yeah. but you're just like thank you for that and the universe just opens up and accepts the gratitude that in any circumstance that is how you feel i totally agree i even say to people guys that's how i pray yeah i pray by assuming that which i'm asking for is yes. already given to me 
So I thank him as opposed to yes. asking him for it. Yes. He's already told me that whatever I need, he's, he's already given me 100%. everything that I need 100%. in my powers to attain whatever I yeah. want. So my prayers are always thanking him yeah. that even whatever I don't have, <laughs> I assume mentally exactly. that I, he's already given to exactly. me. So I'm always th thankful. Exactly. So I appreciate you for that. And I'm glad that you gave us this opportunity to use your words as a teachable moment yeah. to some younger guys who are watching yeah, out there. Yeah, no, my pleasure, my pleasure. It, it's such an honor. And you know, just going back to that, visualization is a big thing. Um, your gratitude and your, your level of expectation from the world should come. <laughs> I wrote a post the other day and I was like, 16-year-old um, me is thankful because they prayed for this version of me. I'm far from the epitome of what success is in my story, but, I know there are certain things I prayed for at 16, for this 23 year old who's now sitting here and I'm like, I'm, I thank God I didn't give up. I thank God I continued. I thank God that I understood that life is a great experience of consistency, patience and love and just finding the right formula for every single person in that regard. So definitely, yeah. And let me take you a couple of years back. Yes. Who is Pale Samolefo? Where were you born and what is your story? Shucks. So we got three hours, right? No, oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, so, Palesa Mulefe is an only child who was raised by a wonderful, beautiful single mother who really did her all to make sure that I had all I could in life. Um, I went to so many schools growing up. I think maybe about eight schools. I never stayed in a school for more than two years. Um, and I always thought of it as a disadvantage before only because the connections that everybody else made from primary or, or uh, university, um, thank you, or university, those lifelong friendships, I never really got to formulate those because I'd always leave and I'd always travel. But it gave me great insight into great personable skills. I was able to connect with so many people on so many levels and understand stories and backgrounds of so many people, um, which also feeds into my passion, which is acting. Um, acting to me is not just being able to emote emotion or play a role. It's being able to put yourself aside and taking on someone's coat and putting it on you and telling their story through your eyes and hoping that in whatever way or shape or form the writer or director was hoping you can send that message across, you can do that. I take it as a very selfless act and I owe it to my past of being put in different situations growing up in different scenarios and having to adapt to those different circumstances that really just helped me become this eager, good student, good pupil um, of life and of acting and of really the art and creative industry. Education? Um, so my educate right now I am currently trying to get my qualification in project management. I have a qualification in behavioral technician, um, which is a behavioral analysis course. So I'm huge into mental health. It is my advocacy has been before I was Miss Botswana, and it is my project right now as Miss Botswana, where I want to eliminate the value of mental health within the education system for the children. So the way that goes is I had this concept of, okay, Put a child in a room with a good psychologist and, you know, talk them through some problems they're going through. But once they move out of that place and they go back to the classroom or back home, they still have a problem because it's counterintuitive if the classroom is where the problem lies or home is where the problem lies. So now what do we do? How do we approach the situation? We look at the trifecta, the parent, the student, as well as the teacher. How can we because they're all people how can we address that situation and make sure it's a coherent and great environment to nurture a child for them to grow up so that is what my project is about in Miss Botswana um, um, it's about that and it's about seeing how to go to the grassroots level of how to nurture a child growing up when they're young they're very impressionable they mimic what we do and so how do we protect them the best way we can the world is huge, it's vast, it's, it's, it's filled with many scary things, but we also need to equip them the best we can to go out into the world and sort of navigate how they want to see it or how they want to understand it. Um, so that's as far as education and also the mental health aspect of it goes. And then how did you enter Miss Botswana or did you even think you'll probably make it this far? With, with Miss Botswana, shucks. So 
great story actually, um, which also goes to just the community aspect of it and having people who support you and see things even when you don't see them. So yeah. Like you should have people around you who can see the great potential you have when Osai born and to guide you in that direction. So there's this lady called Zinedine, um, a friend of mine, and I know her through the creative industry. And she literally said, Palasa, you are our next Miss Botswana. Please just enter. I just need you to enter, but you are the next Miss Botswana. And I said, Zinedine, I left it off and I didn't even enter. She called like three people to come to me. This is during the lockdown, eh? This is during the lockdown and everything was virtual at the time. So I recorded a video, all of that, because she sent three more people to say, Palasa, look, I was told to tell you to enter Miss Botswana. Um, and I was like, okay, look, I didn't get one sign, I didn't get two. I, I'm getting a lot of signs. Let me let me follow through with this. And I think the moment I, I got into it, I realized why. It's tapping into a different potential of mine that I never I never realized. It's a vehicle that moves, it's great, and I didn't realize it or notice it. Um, I'd always prayed to God to represent possibilities to a child or to anybody who looks at me and says, wow, if she can do it, so can I. Or if I can ignite a certain fire within someone to go for what they want. I didn't know pageantry would be that vehicle, but it is, and I am so grateful for that and i'm grateful that she even took heed of that and and went and said palasa join miss Botswana. and it's been an amazing journey you know it's it's been it's 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 been quite quite the growth process it's been quite the experience in terms of learning who i want to become within the process and i and i said this before i i i, I won i said the young lady who's here is not going to be the same after this whole process. I need to become the Palace of so that I can be of great service because that's what I take being Miss Botswana as. You are a service to the country. It's a selfless act of being a part of a team that wants to see Botswana at a better standing in whichever way it can through the social project or to, through interaction or anything that you can do. And it's been such a great honor, you know. It's been amazing. Um, it's been the growth. It's been a great way to connect with so many people. I've learned so much. I've traveled and I'm still traveling. And, you know, the theme right now, the theme right now is um, impact and fun. If it's not fun and it's not impactful, I don't want it. Miss World? Miss World was a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Miss World was an absolute blast. We went Puerto Rico, so you can imagine the food, the dance, the culture. Everything was just wow. You know, it reminded me in, in some aspects of back home because Botswana is very cheerful, the dance and everything like that, the home, the food. So going into Puerto Rico and just seeing a different version of that being played out and how welcoming they were, um, I ululated a lot. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Woo! Sorry. <laughs> Go right ahead. I, I ululated a lot in, um, in Puerto Rico because in, in Puerto Rico, in Botswana rather, it's, it's a... In, Lerona, when we all late, we're happy. It's, yeah. it's a way of showing joy and celebration, you know. It's an and African way of it's showing. It's an African yeah. way of showing joy and celebration. And yeah. I think it was so amazing that I not only brought that side of me and my culture to them, but they embraced that literally because when they were doing their dances at some point in time, um, this little this little boy um, started ululating on the mic. Yeah. And they don't ululate. The first time I ululated, I think they all looked at me like I'm a little crazy. But now they were all, he calls me, Adelaide! like yeah, he looks yeah. at me and goes like, like yeah. I'm like, hi. So it was amazing to see that fusion of us in Africa going out to the world and Kuri, the combination and it, it seamlessly kind of joined together. And it was filled with not only learning or education, just fun and love and connection. And that was so important. So Miss World was a blast. I got to connect with so many women from different parts of the world. I got to know different parts of the world and, you know, the way they operate. Some are new, some are old. And it's just, it's just a blast. It's, it's just a great opportunity that I think everyone needs to sort of leave home ground and see the outside world at least once. It, it opens up your mind. It really does. And it, it kind of helps you know that there's so much more out there um, mm. to sort of know that, okay, the possibilities are limitless. The possibilities are endless. And, you know, how you choose to navigate life is, is yours, but you are not confined to a box, essentially. So I hear that you also met the uh, president and the first lady. Ah, I love them so much. Yes, <laughs> I did. I did. They hosted a beautiful brunch for myself and my mother. Um, at the state house and 
it's just one of those things that I can't believe happened, you know. Um, our president has been nothing but supportive. Um, when I was in Puerto Rico, he released a video urging Batswana to support to you. Beautiful. And there was this app. <laughs> I feel like a lot of Batswana will relate to this. You know, there's this app uh, called uh, Mobstar that we were using during Miss World. Okay. It was one of the most frustrating things to use because I it think wasn't easy to use. It, it yeah. wasn't easy to use. It sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off. But every single person was voting because you get the votes and they get counted online. And we were ranked third within wow. the whole. Th yeah, and I'm talking. I believe it was like about 16, 16 million, 18 million. 18 million, uh, 18 million votes on it. And that's amazing considering we're 2 million in Botswana. Wow. So it's like the passion and the fight was there. And the president was like, guys, we have to vote. So me being in Puerto Rico, you know, that puts fire in your step. That makes you feel like my country's behind me. Not only that, the world recognizes that your country's behind you. Mm. And you are seen and you are branded in an exceptional way that I think was great for Botswana and was great just for us and our presence within that competition at that time. And I know that you're also doing the um, Charity Foundation for Miss World. Um, charity Foundation, what do you mean? I think you did. Uh, there's an article that I read up yeah. that talks about you having done some charitable work or charitable deeds even with the with the um, Miss, Miss World. World. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think maybe that article is referring I haven't seen all the articles but I believe that article might be referring to beauty with a purpose oh yes. okay okay so Miss World has this um, competition called beauty it, it's a competition but it's really part of the the whole process which is beauty with a purpose so you have young ladies who come but they need to have a cause what is their cause and trust you me we looked through the videos and everyone had to sort of introduce that video online and so many women had amazing charitable causes. So the charitable cause that I was speaking of was the trifecta of mental health of children within the education system. That was my, um, my purpose, my Beat With A Purpose project, right? And every lady had to come forth with one. So it's, it's something that um, we sort of package to go to Miss World, but when you come back, um, you still continue it in your reign, and I and I and I I'm very much for making it a legacy project, and not so much. And it says so much it says on your profile that you're an actress. Have you started acting, or is it something that you'd like to get into? No, no shame. I've I've started acting. Okay. Um, I think now more than ever, because like I said earlier, infiltrating the South African market in my acting in the in, in the acting industry, uh, because this platform has I think created such uh, an awareness and visual representation of who I am. Right, so my audience has gotten bigger. The people who are supporting have gotten bigger. The eyes who are looking have gotten like much more. So now, before Miss Botswana, I was acting. Um, I have done a few films in Botswana. I have written and produced a few films in Botswana as well. And you know, now it's just about taking it up a notch. You know, um, one of your very own inspires me greatly, Tusom Bedu. Oh, I yeah. think she's doing a phenomenal thing. You know, I follow her on Instagram and I see her doing the karate chop thing, and I'm like wow you are looking like superwoman you know and I think also looking at her background that she has been doing this for a while you know she has been acting for a while and that is something I admire and it also just puts me in a position to know that you need to have consistency and you need to work on your craft a lot and which is why being here with you is such a great opportunity you know like being able to branch out and still work on who you are and my craft as an actor and, and connecting with you and learning from everybody who I came here with and, and Botswana in, in South Africa as well is a great opportunity. That is so totally awesome. I'm very proud of you, young you. as you are. Thank you. Now I understand why they say you're an old soul. Thank you. Um, because for me, it doesn't sound like it's a 23-year-old speaking. <laughs> it sounds like it's a 35-year-old oh, speaking. Oh, shucks. You know? And I think that is, that is something incredible. I appreciate it. Um, do you have a plan to say maybe I want to um, establish myself in the South African market and then I want to go overseas or, yes. or you just want to flow with the flow? Um, no, 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 no. So I have this dream, right? The scary dream. We, we all have one scary dream. But before I go into it, yeah. what's your scary dream? I don't have a scary dream, but I've got very big dreams. Okay, I, let's I hear wanna it. build universities in the country. I, I wanna be I build um, early development centers in the country. I so a lot of that. the work that I wanna do requires me to be wealthy first. Yes. So right now I'm pursuing wealth and then from there 
I want to basically build systems and structural systems that are going to exist even in my absence that, right. are, con that are going to continue to help our right. communities in South Africa. That's amazing. Yeah, that's what I want to do, yeah. I've already started. That's yeah. a scary dream. <laughs> okay, you just hit me. That's, a, that's an amazing dream. Yes, um, ma'am. So my big scary dream is that I want to have an Emmy before I turn 30. Wow. <laughs> oh, that is so possible. Yeah. That is so highly yeah, possible. Yeah, I, I want to do that so bad, you mm. know. And I, I say it all the time. I think the first time I said it, I was like, Paliza. That is crazy. But the more and more I say it, I'm like, yeah, it is crazy. And I, and I want to do that. And I feel like the, the same thing we're talking about, the gratitude, the frequency, the vibration. You need to be so intentional and visualize your future and your life for it to come into fruition. From, from the, 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 the way the brick looks on the ground you're walking on to the outfit you have on, to the feeling you have when you win that Emmy, to who is sitting next to you when you win that Emmy, to the way your speech sounds and everything like that. Um, the same thing that Jim Carrey did, same thing that Jim Carrey did when he wrote that check, you know, it, it's an amazing thing. It's, it's so, I, that's my dream. That's, that's my big dream. And I can't wait for that to happen. And I'm very happy that you already know where your life is going. Yeah. And the fact that why well, you man, you're yeah. a very responsible person. Yes. And I'm actually even more impressed because you've just spoken about from the outfit that you're wearing. Yeah. And clearly tells me that you're conscious because yeah. the outfit that you're wearing right now, <laughs> it looks and sounds like it's local. Is it local? Yes. Um, African. This, yes, yes, yes. Gloto, actually. I'm a beautiful designer from Botswana, Mboko. Um, she made this beautiful two-piece and she does amazing clothes. She made this line called Cries in Kalanga or Cries in Your Native Language. And she's so authentic to being true as a black person person and true to your roots it's absolutely amazing and i'm i'm happy you took notice of that actually yeah i did because i also wear local because you also wear local. Is, uh, yeah, wear local yeah we are localers music High will five. save oh, he the left day me hanging. yeah no we rock local the sneakers you already know um drip drip chuluga you That's guys dope. know That's the dope. socks uh let me take them out as well yeah oh my god we have to brag about local ish, brands ish, i'm ish. wearing the cotton first oh, um wow collection oh, well. by um, Imbe, <laughs> so it's always local, that's why I could recognize. Is it, is it my turn? Okay, I'm wearing Mboko, <laughs> I have Mboko on my head, and these are handmade by Tish, these earrings, Tish love you, she makes them like right from the comfort of her dining, exceptional woman, Mboko, 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 Mboko. It's very done. important, yeah. The world is changing slowly, yes. you know, the, the, um, the, barking, the notion of body Gucci, body Louis Vuitton on our chest, yeah. I think, there's still certain people that maybe go through that phase, yeah. but maybe they outgrow it at some point. Yeah. And I always say, don't block people from experiencing it. Yes. Go experience it. At some point, maybe you'll also mentally grow. Yeah. And then you'll probably grow out of it and understand the yeah. importance of, su of supporting African brands. But you like know? How important do you think it is to support local African brands? It's important because it goes back to that conversation of keeping the money circulating around yes, us. Yeah. And it conscientizes people to appreciate our own as opposed to foreign yes, products, you know? Yes, okay, no, I like that. I, I think that's so true because sometimes you don't even understand why people like something, but because you found them in that train, you sort of hop on board without finding your own original sense of style and why you like something or why you want to wear that and how it makes you feel. Because you want to wear it because it makes them feel good. But how does it make you feel, actually? Yeah. And I feel I feel really cool in this outfit. And I feel great. And I feel proud. Thank you. Of, of even being in this clothing, you know? It's a big deal. Are you a religious person? I'm a spiritual person. Okay. Yeah. What's the difference between you being a spiritual person um, and uh, so religion? I had a very difficult time in my life, I think, trying to navigate the constructs of religion. Um, especially because that's when I had anxiety really like on full throttle. Um, I was having panic attacks and I think that time in my life I was going through so much, you know, and I couldn't handle or fathom what was going on. Um, and I was, in a, I, was, I was in church, right? Um, and in that church, I kind of realized that so much for what I was searching for was external in terms of looking for help externally from them to heal me or to help me. Um, and it comes down to having your relationship with God and having your own personal relationship with God and you being the tailor of how that looks. Because if I expect the God in you to help me and don't have the God in me, then everything is futile, everything is in vain. So that is where the spirituality aspect of it comes in. Um, a lot of the time, 
it's so easy to judge somebody based off of what you were told or what you were conditioned to understand how something needs to look but once you have that personal conviction then you can overcome things like panic attacks because I didn't go see a doctor to to get over them I had to search within myself and become an observer of what is going on in my life and to understand the root cause of what is causing me so much conflict that I'm having physical manifestations of what's going on in my mind and I thought like once that had overlapped, I was so afraid because we deal with stress on a daily basis. But it's another it's another issue for it to physically manifest and for you to now get like terribly ill or to have attacks or to do this and do that. So then you need to take a step back and say, OK, Valesa, I am right. The I am. What is happening? How can I as this person see fit to your betterment how can I as this person see fit that you are seen and you are felt and you are not neglected and I'm taking care of you the way that you want to be taken care of and the way that I know you should be be taken care of um, so that's kind of how I, I govern my way through it I am I'm so far from understanding the concept of anything really and that there's a lot of power in knowing that you don't know because you're so open to growth and you're so open to understanding and you're wow, so Wow, I like that. There's yeah. a lot of power in knowing that yeah. you don't know. Yeah. Mm. Because when you become a great pupil, you understand that you can be corrected. You're a student of life. Mm. You understand that a concept you have held on to for years can be changed like that. You understand that that is life and you are open to that. You do not fight off everything because you don't recognize it. Don't fight something because you don't understand it. You don't understand a lot of things. So it's just, it's just really that for me. Um, um, prayer is, is a big thing. Prayer, my mother is a prayer warrior. Prayer is what kept me from falling down. Prayer is what kept me um, sane. Prayer is what kept me strong. Every time my mom speaks to me, she's like, be strong and be courageous, Palisa. Every time she hugs me, or I'm, I'm going through a slump, or even when I'm not, she's like, be strong and be courageous. And, you know, with, without that woman, I don't know where I would be. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. She's been such a shield, such a pillar. And, and I'm grateful. How does your future look like? A bright. I know that it's bright, I can already <laughs> tell, but tell us, um, I mean, you would have won a Grammy, a, a Emmy by age 30, Yes. in your 30s, basically you'll be global, right? Yes. You already are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, my future, so my future looks like great community projects that can operate on a large scale and they're sustainable. I am learning a lot about sustainability so um forbes africa just graced through the continent and i was one of the delegates to be honored and honored enough to go there and a lot of the people there speak about sustainability and i loved that sustainability how do you introduce a project mobilize it and keep it sustainable how do you visit a community leave but your impact still lasts. How do you talk to somebody, put them in the right direction, it, um, put them in the right direction and help them stay in that direction? That is what my future looks like. It looks like, it looks like helping, it looks like acting, it looks like infiltrating through tough barriers and breaking the glass ceilings yeah. um, and you know being a part of a sisterhood and being a part of a group of people who trailblaze like crazy um we usually ask our guests yes. to tell us the books that they're reading yes. or to recommend at least three books to our audiences out there yeah. Um, on the previous episode, actually, I didn't ask Jackie because she already brought her she, nine She books. bought the whole collection. <laughs> she would have said, um, um, so she actually gifted me with um, the collection as well. Yeah. And I have to start on Bear. Michelle told me to start on Bear, so I think I'm going to start on Bear then work my way up. 
um, in that whole regard. I'm a big person on podcasts. I, okay. I do podcasts a lot. I listen to uh, John Peterson. Um, I also okay, let me write it down. Yeah, I'm gonna check him out. John Peterson. Yes. Peterson or Peter. Peterson? Sorry, Peter. Okay, Peterson. Um, okay. I listen to John Peterson. Um, I also listen to Sadhguru. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who else Shout out I? to Sadhguru. He's amazing. No, His wisdom. No, shucks. On His wisdom level. is yeah. just insane. I listen to him as well. I love him. Love him to bits. Um, and I also listen to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I also listen to my mom. So, um, but check out uh, Ene, Mr. Peterson, and Mr. Sadhguru. I think those are amazing people who I love to listen to and hear what they're about. 2021 Miss Botswana, Palisa Mulefe, who's also participated in Miss World. Do you know, I, I always used to get like really shocked back home when um, like children, like, like children recognize me and they say, hi, Palisa. And you know, that only goes to show how much, how much weight like impact carries children children looking up to you is not a small deal it's, yeah it's a big deal it's a blessing because those are the leaders of tomorrow not just that but they're like little flowers that need to be nurtured mm. and you need to be careful what you pour into them mm. because they're gonna grow up and little other budding flowers will look up at them like a continuous cycle. So then how do you feed into that loop and help it germinate beautiful, blossoming individuals who are passionate and relentless in what they want to do? Um, and just speaking to the ladies out there, you know, be relentless. And I mean seriously, because you want to untap your potential and in exactly what you want to do. And it is difficult when you want to write your own book because everybody wants to be an author, okay? But you need to be the author of your book and understand the concept that you deserve to take up space and you need to take up space. You need to inspire people around you because there's so many people who do not believe that they can take up space. You need to remind them and reminding them means being an example and being an example is not easy. Being an example is difficult because it means you lead. But for you to lead, you need to be able to be led. So resilience, confidence, and I'm not talking about picture confidence. I'm talking about conviction confidence. Believing yourself in a place where even when no one sees you, you see yourself. Because that is what will keep you going, even on days where it feels like there's nothing to live for, I promise you. So, yeah. I'm very proud of you, my sister. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. you are amazing. Ah. <laughs> You're going extremely far. Thank I can you. already tell. Thank you. I actually now understand why why you are Miss Botswana. Thank you. Oh, well, thank yeah. you. Appreciate I wish you all it. of the best. Appreciate it. Appreciate Ladies it. Ladies and gents, we'll see you on the next video. Amazing. <laughs> Our episodes are gonna start coming up, come out from Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Go follow her in her social media platforms. Go give her those engagements. Go give her those likes. And if you're watching right now, go to her social media platforms and tell her, I was introduced to you by that <laughs> podcast. What's up? And then start supporting her work. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys on the next video. <laughs> this is The Hustler's Corner.